Good morning. Welcome to worship at Cape Fear Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you're all worshiping with us today. If you haven't already done so, please take the Red Fellowship pads, which are parked in the pew rack on the center aisle. If you would add your name and the date to that page, if it's not already there when it gets to you, um, pass it on down. When it gets to the end, you pass it to, back to the aisle, um, and you get to see who's sitting on the pew with you and perhaps learn the name of somebody new and be able to greet them personally at the conclusion of worship. You can just leave the papers in the pads, um, and one of our deacons will collect those at the conclusion of the service. Um, let me highlight just a few announcements this morning. If you'll open up your bulletin and pull out the colored insert section, the announcement section, um, I'm just going to highlight a few things. After worship today, we will hold our annual congregational meeting. There's information about that in your bulletin. Printed annual reports are available outside the sanctuary exit doors, or from an usher. Um, when we get around to uh, the meeting itself, we'll make sure the ushers um, pass out uh, reports to anyone who needs one. That will take place immediately following worship. Um, let me tell you um, what's going on in two weeks. February 22nd, we will um, have Scout Sunday. Uh, we'll be celebrating uh, the, both the Boy Scout and Cub Scout troops that are sponsored by our church. That's February 22nd. Encourage you all to come um, be there for that Sunday. Um, also, um, annual giving statements from 2014 are available in the box, which is right across from the church office. Uh, they're in alphabetical order um, in envelopes. Um, so grab yours on the way out. This will help save us some postage. So... Um, this is Blanket Month uh, for uh, Presbyterian Women, the Blanket Program, which is uh, by Church World Service. Uh, um, Marianne, I'm wondering if you want to say uh, a couple words about that. Blanket. <laughs> um, $5 donation for the Holy Spirit and Prayer and Honor Sunday. Um, there'll be an insert next week that gives much more details of what it goes for. Um, for so, um, we're going to go to the Holy Spirit around $300. Yeah, and it's blankets plus, which means it's not just blankets, but it's tools and, and, and other stuff too. Um, yeah, um, it's a really great thing, and, and I'm glad we do it every February. The hearts are up here. Um, put $5 in the plate or put a check for $5. Um, somehow indicate that that's for uh, blankets. Um, and by the end of February, this will be all filled up. So thank you all very much. Yes, okay. Uh, a not, right, a nice subtle goal. We've given over $500 the last few years, so let's do more. Yeah. Yes, Sean, you have an announcement. Huh? Thank you. Talking about my modeling prowess. <laughs> Christian, Christian just got it. Yeah. Um, other announcements this morning? Anything going on that um, I missed? Great. Let us worship God. Please stand as you are able.
Let us join together in the call to worship as found in your bulletin. The God of creation makes us one in body. The God of Christ makes us one in the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith using the prayer found in your bulletin. We pray. Spirit of God, you are the breath of creation, the wind of change that blows through our lives, opening us up to new dreams and new hopes, new life in Jesus Christ. Forgive us our closed minds, which barricade themselves against new ideas, preferring the past to what you might want to do through us tomorrow. Forgive our closed eyes, which fail to see the needs of your world, blind to opportunities of service and love. Forgive our closed hands, which clutch our gifts and our wealth for our own use alone. Forgive us our closed hearts, which limit our affections to ourselves and our own. Spirit of new life, forgive us and break down the prison walls of our world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord said to the prophet Ezekiel and us, I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. You will be my people and I will be your God. Friends in Christ, by the power of the Spirit, we are united with Christ and given a new spirit. Live in the joy and peace of that assurance. As God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass this peace of Christ on to each other. May the peace of our Lord and, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Would you please turn to those around you and greet one another with signs and words of peace. Good morning. How's it going? Good. How's everybody today? Hey, I got a question. What does a battery do? Charges things, okay? Makes things work. Yeah. Um, there's a word that starts with P. Powers things. Yeah. Batteries power things. Okay, so this is a, what kind of battery is this? Do you know? Pop quiz? No, oh, Duracell. It is Duracell. Yes. <laughs> Double A. Right. Double A. Um, so, um, this is a cool little flashlight um, that I got at a Young at Heart meeting one time um, that works on a whole lot of different kinds of batteries. Um, it'll work on D batteries, C batteries, or Double A. It's not that bright, is it? Huh. Um, yeah. It's because it's not dark. Yeah. If, if the room were dark, it'd probably be a much brighter. Okay, so these same batteries can be used for other things. I just have to figure out, make sure I have this one right. Okay, so what is this that I'm holding? <coughs> A microphone. Ha! Yeah, but it'll work without it. Okay, so. Same battery, right? Same kind of batteries. Uh, batteries working a flashlight and a... Microphone. A microphone. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, that very same battery works the microphone and also works the flashlight. The Holy Spirit, you've heard of that? We've talked about that before. The Holy Spirit is kind of like a battery. The Apostle Paul tells us that there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. Okay, so there are many different kinds of gifts and talents in the church. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy. 
Do these different talents have different power sources? No. All of these are activated by the one and same Spirit. What are some of your talents? Are some of you loving? Are some of you peaceful? Are some of you patient? Are some of you kind? Are some of you generous with yourself and with your resources? Now, out of all these gifts, are any of these better than, than the other? Is being a, a loving person better than being a joyful person? No. They are all good. They are all powered by the very same Spirit of God. Let's pray. Most gracious and holy God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given to each of us through your Spirit. We are grateful for these gifts and these talents and, 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 and the use of them for the common good and for your church. So Lord, I ask that you'd be with all of our young people this week. Help them to use the gifts and talents that you have given to them um, for their time at school, um, for their um, friendships, and with their time with their family. We pray all these things today in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and all of God's children together said. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls.
Our first scripture reading this morning can be found um, in Psalm 84, which is located on the page numbers in your bulletin. We will read this responsibly, which means I'll read the odd-numbered verses, and I invite you to respond with the even-numbered verses. Before we get to that, let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, pour out on us the abundant gifts of your Holy Spirit. May the work begun by the Spirit on the day of Pentecost continue in us as we hear your word and do your will. And all of God's people together said, Amen. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. The Lord does, and has his own one who trusts Our New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 13. Um, page numbers are listed in your bulletin if you want to follow along. Uh, but listen again for the word of the Lord. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. (coughs) To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, So it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to begin this morning by asking a simple medical question. Don't worry, I'm not going to get too personal. How many of you, by a show of hands, have had wisdom teeth removed? Whoa. Several. Me too. I used to have four. And at least some of them, according to x-rays, were embedded in my gum above my permanent teeth, laying perpendicular. Basically, I had teeth in my mouth that weren't contributing to anything. In fact, they were just taking up space. I don't know if you've given this a lot of thought before, but our bodies contain some parts that we don't really need. The appendix, for example. 
this narrow muscular tube that's attached to the large intestine, once served a much more important purpose when humans ate more plants than animal protein. How about your tonsils? Ideally, these tissues at the back of the throat act as a filter for bacteria and viruses. The problem is they are prone to infection, which is why they're removed from so many children's throats each year. And lastly, the part of the body that's on everybody's mind during cold and flu season, sinuses. Despite much debate about their purpose, including as a way of humidifying and heating the air that we inhale, or as a buffer against blows to the face, our nasal sinuses may not serve any real biological function at all. In our New Testament passage this morning from 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul compared the human body to the church and called it the body of Christ. And so if the church is like a body, as he suggests, does this mean that the church body also has some useless parts? Paul grasped, perhaps better than most, that there is no such thing as a worthless member of the Christian community. He also understood how a variety of gifts can support the common good. When it comes to reading the Bible, we know that context is everything. And in the case of the Corinthian church, it's important to know a little something about what was going on in that community that precipitated Paul's letter. The church at Corinth seems to be full of individuals looking out for their own spiritual well-being and is sharply divided in how they understand and live out their call to follow Jesus. The reasons for Paul's exasperation with these first century Christians includes their sinful behavior, their failure to experience the Eucharist or communion as a fellowship feast, and this preoccupation with individual spiritual gifts. Mostly, though, it seems that he is upset at their inability to work together as a community. So Paul lays out this list of gifts that we heard in his letter. Wonderful in their variety. Which, he explains, emanate from the Spirit. Gifts that were most likely present in the Corinthian church. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, the ability to distinguish between spirits, the ability to speak in various kinds of unknown languages, while another is able to interpret those languages. He also prefaces these gifts with the unifying principle that they are given for the common good. Diversity of gifts is not about individualization, Paul says. Nor is one gift superior to another. The diversity is important because all these gifts are necessary for the body of Christ to be complete. In the last couple of verses, Paul writes, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Many members, many different gifts, yet one body, emanating from one spirit. 
This reminds me of the Latin phrase that has been intertwined with so much of the history of our country. It's a phrase that while never officially adopted as a motto, it nonetheless is displayed on most U.S. currency. The phrase, e pluribus unum, which means one from many. Now, of course, the original idea is that out of many states or colonies emerges a single nation. And whether we're talking about one body of Christ or one nation, the idea of a variety of people and gifts coming together with a unity of purpose is an important one. And it is essential for the church. This passage from 1 Corinthians often appears as an alternative text on Pentecost, an alternative to the more familiar verses from the book of Acts. After all, the arrival of the Holy Spirit has been largely interpreted as the birth of the church. Now, today is not Pentecost on the church calendar, but it is our Pentecost as we seek the guidance from the Holy Spirit for us as a congregation. I'm hoping that by now most of you will have read the 2014 annual report. In its pages, you'll have seen the many, many ways that the Spirit of God is moving in this church. You will have seen the varieties of spiritual gifts at work in our members for the common good of this congregation. You will have also seen our challenges, financial and otherwise. And I'll be honest, it's easy to get caught up in the challenges and lose sight of both the past and the future. But we will not be defined by what we can't do. We will not let our size hinder our ability to be the hands and feet of Christ in this community. But friends, in order to move forward, we've got to believe that the God who spoke still speaks. The spirit that moved still moves. And we must do so together as one church, the body of Christ, with its wonderful variety of gifts guided by the one true spirit. I believe that God is calling us to focus on three areas in the coming year. Prayer, mission, and evangelism. You can read about the particulars of this in my contribution to the annual report, and you'll hear more about it in the coming weeks. In short, these are three tangible, inclusive, attainable, pursuits. There will be special activities planned around these areas, but we're also going to work to incorporate them into our ongoing areas of ministry. But God isn't laying these on my heart so that I can go and do them myself. I'm going to need the help of our leaders, our elders, our deacons, and our staff. And they, in turn, are going to need your help. By participating on one of our uh, ministry teams or by getting involved in the projects that support this congregation-wide emphasis. <clears throat> Friends, there has already been and will continue to be much soul-searching on the part of our leadership about where we are as a church, about God's plans for us, and about the ever-changing culture in which we have been called to minister. But we're not alone in this discussion. 
Churches all over the country are having similar conversations. And more importantly, we are not alone because God goes before us, behind us, and beside us. We're not meant to have everything figured out. All we have to do is open ourselves up enough to trust the one who does. We are the body of Christ known as Cape Fear Presbyterian Church. And together, using our God-given gifts and talents, and by the grace of God, we will continue to seek and serve the Lord with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Amen? Amen. 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 Would you please stand as you are able and let us say what it is we believe by using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now's the time in our service when we bring um, our prayers, our prayers of concern or celebrations of joy, um, and share them with your church family.
Um, if you'll look at the announcement section of the bulletin, you'll see a list of names um, there. That's a good starting place um, for your prayers this week. Those are the people that we are aware of who are in need in this congregation. Um, we don't list specifics, um, but that's what intercessory prayer is about. We go to God on their behalf. Um, God knows what they need. So it's a good starting place if you're looking for who to be praying for in this congregation. Um, but I want to open it up to you. What um, other concerns, what other joys uh, do you want to share with your church family today? Christian. Yeah. Patriots won the Super Bowl. I was waiting for someone to mention that. Good job. Congrats, Patriots. Yeah, it was, a, it was an excellent, excellent game. Others? Concerns? Joys? Yes? Steel, the birth of Steel and Joiner. And what's the connection to you? Okay. The mom is a very close friend of the family, almost um, like a sister. So congratulations um, to their family and for Steel and others. Yeah, Ruby and Julius Howard have both been sick on and off. Um, and we heard after the fact that, that Ruby had been in the hospital. Um, so prayers for Ruby and Julius. Um, pray for uh, both Dick and Betty Smith. Dick isn't with us this morning as he usually is. Um, prayers for him and for his wife, Betty. Yeah. Sharon? You can catch up after. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and prayer, so prayers for your co worker as well as for the Kendall family. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, yeah, um, Wayne's. We talked about this beforehand because Wayne works over at Walmart. Um, prayers for those affected by the recent wave of violence in our community um, and the shootings that took place Friday, um, literally just up the road, um, Mon Monkey Junction. Um, prayers for those families who have been affected um, by that. Um, and prayers for peace uh, in our community. Coach Steve Smith passed away as a freshman's family. He's who now? He's a basketball coach? Okay. <laughs> not from here. Not, not from here. I've heard the name. Your dog is named after Dean. Yeah, see? Okay. I'm not completely in the dog. Um, sorry to hear, but when did that happen? This morning. Sorry to hear. Huh? Okay. Um, prayers for the Smith family and for the much, much larger um, legion of fans um, and connections to that university. You have to be a to understand that, John. Yeah, and I'm not. Yeah. I, get, I fully own that. Yeah. Margaret. Okay. Prayers for Margaret's nephew Raymond. Um, yeah, um, having um, uh, quite a struggle with health issues. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I would say it's a joy to have our wonderful friend here this morning. You going to introduce him? <laughs> you can't leave me hanging like that, Kitty. How are you? Robert, nice to meet you. How are you? Becky, great. Hi, Helen. Great, glad to have you guys with us today. Pete Brown. Pete Brown is the retired associate pastor at First Presbyterian Church. Nice to have you with us. We're glad everyone is with us in worship today. Always. Yeah. Um, other prayers? Any other concerns or joys? Shannon? I'm glad it's almost 70 degrees today. 
I'm not sure it's going to last, but we'll take every little bit that we can. Yeah, it's not, it's not Boston. Right. We're supposed to get like two more feet of snow. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, take the, we'll take the nice days when we can get them. Anything else? Let's take these to God. Most gracious and holy God, we do give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the movement of your spirit in this congregation. Um, as we reflect on the past year and we reflect on, on all that you were able to do through us as a congregation. And as we look forward to this year coming and, and even further beyond than that. We ask for your spirit's movement again and to continue. Um, that we would discern the path that you have for us as we continue to minister in this community. Lord, we, we are grateful for everyone who's with us today. Um, we're grateful for our visitors. We're grateful for our longtime members. We're grateful for our choir. We are um, truly, truly grateful um, to have God's house filled this morning. Lord, you have heard our concerns as well. You, heard, you know those things that are just really wearing on us, those things that are, that, are, that are oppressing us. We think about the violence in our community. We ask for peace and justice, that your justice would roll down like the waters. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for all those who are in need in many other ways. And Lord, we only know a fraction of them, but you know everything. You know what people need, and we ask that you would bring it to them. Lord, we pray for those who are battling colds and battling flu and, and, and various other illnesses. Um, we pray healing upon them and we pray protection on the rest of us, um, that you would keep us healthy. Lord, we thank you for this congregation, for all of its members, and for the variety of gifts and talents that are represented here. We thank you for our leaders, for our elders, our deacons. I thank you for our staff. Lord, I just pray that you would guide us and watch over us and lead us into what you want us to do as a congregation. Lord, we close today by using the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways we respond to all of God's blessings in our lives is through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Through the 
voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joys we share as we tarry there, none other has ever Most gracious and holy God, we do thank you for these gifts and the givers, and we dedicate them in your name to your work, both here in Wilmington and throughout the world. Let all of God's people together say, Amen.
friends, our worship ends, but now our work begins. Um, in a few minutes, we will start our annual meeting. Um, visitors, you are encouraged or welcome to stay. I'm not sure that you necessarily want to. Um, it's a business meeting, um, but we are glad that you're here anyway and wish you well. Um, hope you have a good week. Um, at the conclusion of the service, if our elders would move forward and sit in the front pew so that if folks have any questions, um, you are easily accessible. Friends, go in peace. May the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the ever-present fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.